So welcome to MyJu TV. We pair our favorite musicians with makers of wine, beer, spirits, and today we're in Falls Church, Virginia. Why? Because now it is home to two of our favorite things. Uh, rockin', we call it Roots and Blues, and uh, freshly craft local beer. Uh, the person who's quenching our thirst for the, the Roots and Blues is Tom Principato. So thank you, Tom, for joining us. And then we have brewer Bill Madden, who's uh, really been uh, quenching our thirst for beer for about a decade now. Uh, first at Capital City Brewing, then Vintage 50, and he, this summer he just opened up his new restaurant here at uh, the Mad Fox Brewing Company. Um, so Bill, why don't you tell us a little bit about the, the restaurant? Uh, we're an English-style gastropub. Uh, this has been uh, in the works for a good five years or so now with my wife and my business partner, Rick Garvin. Um, Something, it's been my dream since graduating from brewing school all those years ago, back in 1995. Filmed my own place, and here we are. It's spectacular. I'm still walking in the dream. Yeah, and it's a great location too, right on Main Street here. Falls Church is just a neat little town. And actually, I just found out you grew up here. This is my stopping ground. This is where I grew up. Yep. Yeah, that, that's awesome. So, so you said you went to brewing school. Were you a home brewer first, or did you? I started home brewing in San Francisco back in 1989. When I first lived out there. And uh, my friends always said, hey man, your beer's really good, you should check out this brewing school at UC Davis. I never heard of it, something my guidance counselor never told me about. And lo and behold, took some coursework at UC Berkeley, got accepted, and uh, it's a one-year program, a master brewers program at the University of California, Davis. Yeah, so that's usually a winery school. Yeah, we or call those guys the, the winers, because they <laughs> take a brewing class and then they whine about their score all, all throughout the <laughs> semester. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So, um, you know, <coughs> brewing, like anything else, is sort of a, you'll, you have a learning curve. So, when you first started out as home brew, did you have, a, or even afterwards, did you have any these colossal mistakes? Uh, you're like, oh, I can't believe I did that. Fortunately, my mistakes were still drinkable. So, uh, not really. That's right. Really. I remember I did. I used to home brew a little bit. And one of the first batches, I put a little bit too much sugar in the bottle for the, the carbonation, and fortunately, it didn't happen to me. But I gave some to my neighbor. And they exploded and into it in his closet, you know, flash shattered everywhere. Uh, so. I did have a couple of mistakes, kind of thing when I was home brewing. Started off uh, cleaning all my equipment with uh, chlorine and realized that that produced chlorophenols and all my beers tasted medicinal. It took us about six batches to figure that one out. <laughs> so, how would one go? So, after you graduated, then um, is it rather easy, well, I would say easy, but straightforward to then move into either apprenticeship or into an assistant brewer? Well, when I got into this in 95, I graduated from UC Davis in 1995, um, this industry was just kicking. I mean, I had 30 offers to work at different breweries throughout the country, and fortunately I landed with Capital City Brewing Company, and they were on a, uh, a growth phase where I got to partake in building out and commissioning four breweries with them, so it was a really exciting time back then. It worked out great for me. Yeah. Timing was everything, I guess. Right. Exactly. And then now, yeah, good timing for us here, opening up. And, and I would say, actually, Tom and I talked about it earlier, just the food here is really good. And, uh, excellent. And what I understand is almost everything is made from scratch. As much as we can. Yeah, so even the, the cucumbers are pickled. Uh, mm -hmm. There's two huge pickle barrels in my cooler right now. One week's worth, and then the next week's worth, because it takes apparently two weeks to make these pickles. Um, we've got a small freezer in the back. But the only thing that's in there is some local made ice cream, and that's about it. Everything else is from scratch. Yeah, very good. So, you can, as you can see, this is a nice place to come and eat and enjoy some beers that we have, like the ones we have here. Um, Tom, a lot of people don't realize is that DC is a, has a, to this day, has a very vibrant music community, particularly roots and blues, and it goes back pretty far. Um, you know, I've been listening to that high style of music for probably 20 years. You've been playing longer. Um, how was it when first breaking in? Because there are some big names uh, that were playing here that have moved on to the national level. Sure, like yeah. Cannon and yeah. Jimmy Thackeray. Well, when I first got out of high school and uh, started uh, playing music professionally in the early 70s, Roy Buchanan was definitely one of the big guns that was achieving uh, international success uh, in the D.C. area. <clears throat> Danny Gatton came <clears throat> pretty uh, much later. Mama Cass Elliott, I think. Right. Was from this area. So how um so you